You know you're a furry when I can say the words sexy rocket raccoon and you know exactly what I'm talking about. Hi everybody, Daphne here and welcome back to my channel. Before we get started, check out my artwork at the galleries and social media sites next to me on the side here. And don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification bell so you can get notified whenever I upload a new video. And as always, there's free comics waiting for you with the link in the description box below, so don't forget to sign up for them. So one day, I was looking at videos on YouTube coming out of Anthrocon, the premier furry convention held annually in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. It's been years since I had attended Anthrocon, and this was probably the first time since the last time I've been there that I was actually seeing how the convention had evolved. The last time I went there, the show was being held in standard hotel ballrooms, but now the convention expands an entire convention center. Watching the videos made me very nostalgic, but most importantly, they made me extremely inspired. Outside of my comic book work on Tall Tales, I don't really get a lot of opportunities to do furry art. So I decided to take advantage and finally work on a piece that I've been mulling on for a while. And now I'm gonna show you pretty much step by step on how I put this final pinup piece together. So if you like furry art and step by step tutorials, I hope you enjoy this video. And stay until the end because I'm going to tell you where you can get your own own sexy rocket raccoon. Because I wanted a particular aesthetic for this piece, the first thing I did was go to Google and search for images that would serve as both reference and inspiration for the final image. I wanted a pulpy sci-fi feel, so I created a mood board filled to the brim with Frazetta models, Bond girls, pulp novel covers, space girl paintings, and classic pinup girls. I also looked up different types of 50s ray guns and made sure to get an actual picture in of Rocket Raccoon himself, since he was the whole reason I was even thinking of doing this piece. The idea was to create a mood board that I could use to help give me a better idea as to what I was going for. Once I was satisfied with my collection of images, I started working on some pose sketches to get an actual feel of what I wanted the final piece to look like. I thought I had recorded video of my actually drawing the final sketch, but it turns out I didn't. Either way, here's the final sketch that I came up with that will be the basis of this Lady Rocket Raccoon piece. And for those of you keeping track, I am using a red Prismacolor Cola Race pencil in a Strathmore 400 series sketchbook. The next thing I did was scan my sketch into Photoshop and printed the red line onto inking friendly paper as the sketch paper is a bit too rough for the pens I was going to use. As this piece was going to be scanned back in and the red lines removed in Photoshop, I was not concerned about inking over lines that could not be erased. Thank goodness for technology. Here I am inking in the printed sketch using Copic Multiliner SP pens using nib sizes 0 0.3, 0 0.5, and 0.7. I like using these Copic pens because they are refillable and the nibs can be replaced when they wear out. They are really good traveling pens because they don't leak like the rapidographs I use on my comic pages. If you want to get any of the art supplies I mentioned in this video, I have Amazon affiliate links in the description box you can use. You help support the channel with your purchase without Amazon adding any extra charge to your order. So win-win! After I complete my inking, 
I scan the piece into Photoshop where I digitally erase all the red line, leaving only the black inked lines. Using channels, I remove all the white so that the lines are on a transparent background. I know I could have just as easily used Multiply, but I found I can't color in my inked lines using that filter as I can deleting the background using channels. I know some of you are probably wondering what I'm talking about, but the video I have here wasn't really filmed with the intention of showing that much technical detail. So what I plan on doing is making a video on a later date where I really go step by step on how I set up my drawings for coloring in Photoshop. Thumbs up if you want me to create that video. I might be able to do that sooner rather than later if enough people request it. Once my lines are established on their own layer, I create a layer to block out the basic shape of the figure. That's the light blue shape you see there. Then I create another layer above that one and this is where I'm going to put down my flat colors using that Rocket Raccoon image for my mood board as a color guide. In this piece I am using the pencil tool to create my flats. I have seen videos where other people are using the lasso tool to block out their colors using the fill tool instead of manually filling in the area like I am doing here. When I colored this piece, I was using a Wacom Cintiq 12X, which was old and wonky and didn't really lend to using the lasso tool in that way. I have since replaced it with a Cintiq Pro 16 inch model, which became a completely different experience and I plan on trying the lasso fill combo in the next piece I color. Now that the flats are done, I create another layer above the blue base layer and begin to block out my shading. This layer is going to be the mid-tone shade layer. The dirty little secret of this part of my process is that I base my shading more on aesthetic rather than whether the light source is correct. I mean, I know pretty much how shading works and where it's supposed to go, but I also look out for how it looks and whether it's appealing to me visually. Although the trick is to make sure it doesn't turn out too over the top, making the overall piece look busy. Your art teachers are going to hate me for saying that. Oops. Pretty much the same as before, I create another layer and this is where my core shadows go. This is also where the piece really begins to come together for me. As long as the shading is what I want, I don't have to worry too much about my base colors, although we are not done yet.
Now we put in the highlights to finish off this section of the process. With all of our shading layers done, we can now complete the piece. First I highlight the base layer and then select the layer with the shading I need to work on. Then I use Ctrl J which duplicates the shading layer using the colors from the base layer. Then I adjust this new color shade layer until I get the colors I want, then repeat the process with the core shadow layer and highlights. Sometimes the colors don't come out the way I want, so I manually adjust them until I get the colors I'm looking for. Some colors, like red and white, aren't affected by the hue and saturation sliders, so I have to fill those areas using the fill tool and then adjust accordingly that way. I also go into the ink layer and color in some of the outlines. Usually a print like this can take me a couple of hours to color from start to finish. After enough finagling, I finally have the finished piece set up and ready for print. So, do you like my Rocket Lady? Lucky for you, you too can take her home with you through my Redbubble shop, where you can get her and other images like her on many different products like shirts, phone cases, and even bags. Or you can go to my main store and pick up stickers, prints, and postcards. So, I hope you liked this video, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this. So, until next time, bye!